<laughs> especially given, well, I suppose I'll, I'll let you off because it is our first service back fully um, since Epiphany, so you are a little bit out of practice, but I think we ought to try that again. You know what you're supposed to say back? He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Just a few notices uh, before we begin uh, our service, and it is so wonderful to be gathered again uh, for Easter. So, uh, of course, we're continuing not being able to have communal singing, and unfortunately, Arthur, our organist, has been asked to shield for a bit longer because his health's not been so good recently, so he's not here to play the organ this morning. But the rules did change last weekend, and we are allowed to sing outside. So what you'll find, in the back of the order of service, I've, put, I've printed three Easter carols or Easter hymns, and when the service finishes today, I will walk out, and if you follow me out, as you leave, uh, feel free to pick up a Palm Cross, if you missed Palm Sunday last week, there's some uh, available there, and also please do take um, an Easter egg from the, from the bowl as you leave, because uh, otherwise Sue's got to eat 40. Easter eggs. <laughs> so, so, um, so take an egg and a palm cross if you want one um, and follow me out onto the grass outside and we'll stand obviously sensibly, socially distanced, we're not going to huddle and try not to huddle as you leave as well so if you sort of go one at a time, uh, just, just bear that in mind. It's easy to kind of think it's all over and it's not really so we still need to be careful. Uh, but we'll gather outside and we'll sing, we'll sing those Easter hymns outside. Uh, which will be really nice, and we certainly did that on Christmas Day, if anyone remembers, we sang, Blind Vida, not Blind Vida Glory, What's it, what, do, what do you sing Christmas Day? Oh, come are you faithful, there we go, <laughs> I'm getting confused now. Um, so we'll do that at the end of the service this morning. Um, so that's, that's the first notice. We are now on a pattern again, as we were before, in terms of our pattern of worship, which we've sort of planned... If this will be in place really up to the 21st of June, um, and after that date we will be thinking about what we're going to do in terms of our service times and our worshipping life together sort of post-pandemic. But for now we're going to continue with having a 10 o'clock Eucharist every other week in each of our churches. Every service will always be live streamed on Facebook, so if, if you'd rather not travel over to Baldwin for the service, from here, you can watch it online. Um, so that's what we're going to carry on doing. So next week, the service is in Balbara, and then the week after, it's back here. And um, the dates are in the front of your um, orders of service today, so you can put all those in your diary. Uh, but we will, as a default, from, from, from now on, all services will be put online as well, which does give you the opportunity there's, there's all sorts of reasons why you might not be able to make it on a Sunday morning. You might be visiting family in another part of the country, or you might, might have had an operation. Um, so that's one of the good things that's come of the pandemic, is we can be more inclusive with the services that we offer. Our phone church services, which take place on a Thursday morning, will continue. And hopefully in July, once the restrictions have lifted, if they have by then, we will... We will bring those services back into church, but we will continue to broadcast them on the telephone so people can still take part on the telephone. So again, <coughs> we're keeping that going as well. I've got a really lovely um, announcement to make this morning, and that is that we're going to be getting a curate to come and work in our benefits with both of our churches. Um, he's called Mike Fitzsimmons. He's from Birmingham. He's got a lovely cockapoo called Lucy two-year-old very enthusiastic dog uh, called Lucy so those of you that are dog lovers can give Mike some tips about where to take his, take his dog for a walk when he's here. He's, he's going to be, and I've said here um, he'll live in the benefice because I didn't know where he was going to be living but he's actually, um, the diocese are renting a property for him in Clown. So Mike's going to live in Clown which is really nice because I live in Balborough so I think that would be good. Um, he'll be with a one inch that way. Um, Mike will be ordained deacon on the 27th of June at Derby Cathedral and we will have a special uh, welcome service at Bulbar Church. We'll have a service of choral even song to welcome him to the benefits on the 27th of June. Um, the time and things like that are to be sort of confirmed. Um, but I'm really delighted that Mike's going to be coming and working with us. He will be with us for about three years and he will be learning on the job. 
So that's how it works in the Church of England. Um, they don't kind of give you a church on your own to look after straight away. Um, once you've finished your ordination training, you're then ordained and then you work alongside a person called the training incumbent. So I'm going to be Mike's training incumbent. So I'm going to be the one that's sort of chosen the ropes, basically. But all of you will also help him to learn and grow um, a, a, as a minister as well, because it's a big life change becoming, becoming ordained. Um, he will serve as a deacon for a year. Um, a deacon's role is, deacon may basically mean servant, and all priests are all, always ordained deacon first, as a reminder that Jesus told us to wash each other's feet. And so a deacon's job is very much out in the community, finding out what people's prayer needs are, preaching the gospel and so on. And then after a year, he will then be ordained priest. And after that point, he'll be able to preside at the Eucharist. He'll be able to do weddings. He'll be able to do all of it, basically, But once he's ordained priest. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted that he's coming to join us. I've done a video interview with Mike, uh, which is on YouTube. I've shared it on Facebook this morning, and it's on the church website as well. Um, it's a sort of 10 minute chat between me and Mike, um, just, just to introduce him to all of you. Because obviously in normal circumstances, he probably would have come along to a service and met you all and had tea and coffee and things. We can't do that. Um, so you can watch the interview on YouTube. And it's, it's really given me a great deal of hope knowing that he's coming. Because it gives us something to look forward to as we emerge from the pandemic as, as, as a benefit. And I think, I think that's really good. And a Bible verse that struck, struck me as I've been thinking and praying about my coming is, is from Isaiah 43, which says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So that's all very exciting. So he'll come and join us at the end of June. Now, um, another nice thing to be doing this morning is I need to publish some bands of marriage. We've got quite a lot of weddings booked in for this year because of course quite a few have been postponed from last year and so on. Um, so here we are. I published the bands of marriage between Christopher John Greaves and Penny Ann Coleman, both of the parish of Barbara, and Richard David Stevenson and Kay Elizabeth Smedley, both of the parish of Clown. This is for the first time of asking if any of you know of any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. So let's pray for these couples. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing these couples together. We pray that you will be with them as they prepare to get married. And we pray that their marriages will be life-giving and lifelong. In Jesus' name, Amen. as we begin our service. Right, give it some welly, everybody. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we take a moment to call to mind our sins and the ways in which we've let God down and let ourselves down. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead we might walk in newness of life, let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, 
heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we declare the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open, in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For the God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. 
came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look, look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'm not very good at being sad. My natural disposition is to be upbeat, happy-go-lucky. So when I feel sad and experience grief, everything feels out of kilter and I have no patience for it. My natural inclination is to ignore the feelings, pretend they're not there and try and carry on as normal. This never works, of course. A lot of the time I am like Peter and John in the account from the Gospel we just heard. Peter and John are presented with some evidence that needs to be dealt with. Jesus' tomb is empty. The cloths he was wrapped in are left behind, with curiously, the headcloth rolled up separately. The Gospel writer says they saw and believed, but then says they still did not understand the scripture that said he must rise from the dead. What I think he means is that they looked, but didn't see. And then we have quite a devastating line, I think. Then the disciples went back home. Just like when I am faced with grief or pain, I sometimes look, but don't see. I don't wait to see what's going on. I try and brush it aside, sweep it under the carpet and carry on. As I said, it, it doesn't work. The disciples go back home. And it is quite some time later that they believe the message of the women, that Jesus really is alive. Mary Magdalene is different. Mary is not afraid to sit with her feelings, to face up to them, to name her grief as she repeats the refrain, 
They have taken my Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Together a group of us has been reading Rowan Williams' book, Being Disciples, this Lent. And he writes about how as Christians we can live life in the spirit. And he suggests that there are four steps. Self-awareness, stillness, growth and joy. And we see this play out very strongly in this beautiful gospel account. Then the disciples went back home. But Mary stood crying outside the tomb. Williams writes that when we experience intense emotions that we need to say, just a moment, can I make some space around these feelings, these instincts, these emotions, these desires? Stand back a little. Give those feelings room to breathe. Give yourself room to breathe. Look them in the eye and say, now come on, how real are you? What's this really about? Mary stays. She allows herself to feel. She allows herself to sob. She is self-aware. Jesus said to her, Mary. Rowan Williams writes, am I being still enough? to hear God speaking my name. Mary recognises the risen Christ as he simply says her name. We need to hear God telling us who we are. Allow yourself to be still enough to hear God creating you now, in this minute, breathing your name into the world, making you alive. Mary is still still enough to hear the voice calling her name. Jesus told her, go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. Jesus is always helping us to grow, pulling us towards him and his ways, asking us to be his voice in the world. Jesus rewards Mary's self-awareness and stillness with giving her a role to play, to be the first to declare that he is risen to the disciples. Mary grows in her faith as she shares it with others. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. Rowan Williams says, How much of ourselves are we ready to know? What helps us be still? Are we prepared to be quietly and positively willing to move on? To be opened up in this way is to discover joy, not happiness, not a transient feeling of euphoria or basic feeling it's basically all right in a kind of shoulder shrugging kind of way, but joy, the sense that we are so connected with something so real that it will break every boundary or container we try to confine it in. A sense of something overflowing, pushing outwards. The gospel or good news is what enables us to make sense of life. It is what enables us to try and interpret what has happened to all of us this last year with all of its pain and suffering. So let us be like Mary Magdalene unafraid to sit with the sadness, to name it, to cry and lament for all that is lost. Let us be like Mary Magdalene, able to be still enough to hear God speaking our name, making us alive again, breathing new life into our exhausted souls. Let us be like Mary Magdalene, ready to go and tell others what we have seen and know to be true. Let us be like Mary Magdalene and full of the joy of resurrection, that joy that bubbles up from who knows where, but cannot be confined, cannot be held down in a tomb, wrapped in cloths, but must burst free. Patrick Kavanagh says that the resurrection is a laughter freed forever and ever. 
I love that image of laughter being freed. It makes me think of that pure kind of laughter that happens when you're in a situation that calls for solemnity. It quite often happens in church when you just get, feel that giggle rising and you're not supposed to be laughing and then it bursts out. It's why those blooper reels taken from films are often better than watching the film itself. It's hearing that laughter break free from its moorings and there is nothing that you can do to stop it. The resurrection is a laughter freed forever and ever. So let joy be unconfined. Let us know the deep joy of the resurrection for ourselves and for our world. Life is being made new. We see it all around us every spring. And I think this year I've never welcomed the spring so much as I have this year. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Alleluia. Would you please stand for the renewal of baptismal vows? Now, since there's some flowers on the font at the back of church, I decided that we would use our portable font here for this purpose. Um, I've also brought with me um, those of you that will remember the lovely Reverend David Hull. He, he gave me uh, this, it's called an aspergillum, and it's, uh, it's for sprinkling holy water. Um, so it's nice to be able to use, use this today, and especially on the day of resurrection, to, to remember David fondly, um, who served in this parish and many other places as well, of course. So I shall use this to, to bless you with the holy water from the font. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him into a new life within the family of his church. <clears throat> now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore I ask these questions. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I, I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. And now I ask you to make the profession of Christian faith into which you were baptised and into which you live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're not going to get as wet as you usually do. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I'm looking forward to having a curate, because my training incumbent used to drench me. Uh, with water at this point in the surface and now I can get my own back. <laughs> of course we have here the Paschal candle, the Easter candle, uh, which I painted last week. Um, and uh, we have a new one every year and it represents the risen Christ and that was blessed last night at the Easter vigil service over at Balbra. Um, and it will be used to light all the baptism candles uh, for the children that we baptise or, or adults that we baptise um, this year. So you'll see it has, has the uh, year on it, um, and it, and it always says Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
So please would you be seated as we come to the time of prayer. Christ is risen and the power of his resurrection fills the world today with new life, hope and expectation. And so we bring him all our needs. Faithful God, we think of your church today celebrating the resurrection all over the world. Language, race and nationalities may be different, but our worship and our joy on the day of resurrection make us one in the gospel. We pray that the Holy Spirit may guide and strengthen us in mission and service, praying that day by day we may grow in love for you and all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, at this joyful Easter tide, we pray for our families and friends especially those still unable to be together. We thank you for modern communication systems, which allow us to see and talk to loved ones, even when separated by great distances and by the pandemic. <coughs> we pray for our churches here in Clown and Baldwell, as we start to be able to meet together for worship again. We thank you for Reverend Bryony, and all she has done for us during lockdown, with online services, phone church, and newsletters. Give us all the strength and encouragement as we move forward in helping to grow our churches and further your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Creator God, we pray for all those who are in need and ask for your compassion on all who are suffering. Those ill in body, mind or spirit, the lonely, the broken hearted, the homeless, those mourning the loss of a loved one. We think of all those we have lost in the last year and all the victims of COVID-19. Along with those known personally to us, in a moment of quiet, we bring them all before you now, Lord. Please be with them all, Lord, a hand to hold in their darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you that we can worship you today, not simply as the crucified Christ, but as our risen Lord and Saviour. We praise you that death was not the end, but a new beginning, not simply for you, but for us too. We praise you for this time of joy and thanksgiving, a time that speaks of victory, renewal and hope. And for the great message of Easter, that has spoken to countless people across the years and that continues to speak to us today. Receive our grateful and joyful worship. Come among us now in your risen power and send us out to proclaim your name. To you be praise and glory, this day and always. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since it's been a little while since uh, we've had communion together, let me just give some instructions again uh, for when communion comes. Um, so if you just make your way up to receive communion, um, you can see that there's some markings on the floor to help you work out social distancing, so try and stand on those. So just queue like you would at the post office or wherever, <laughs> and it's much more exciting than queuing at the post office. 
Um, and then um, if you come to receive, and it's the, just in the bread form um, that we receive in communion at the moment. Um, so obviously you can take your mask off to take the bread and then put your mask on as you make your way back. And as you make your way back, if you come back through the children's chapel and round and then back to your seats. So just make, basically make sure that you don't end up sort of bunching up and things like that. If you would rather just receive a blessing rather than, than the bread, if you could bring your order of service with you, and then that will indicate to me that you would like to have a blessing. Um, so that's fine. But everybody that's been baptised is welcome to come and see, to receive communion. So please would you stand for the peace. This is my favourite announcement of the piece, by the way. <laughs> I always like, I like the way it's phrased. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Alleluia. So let us offer one another a sign of peace by waving, turning and waving at each other, showing the peace with one another. And peace be with all of you watching at home. Jesus Christ, we believe you, and all we have heard is true. When you break bread, may we recognise you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring life to your world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and open to them the gates of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, the Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grounded by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, 
these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the mother of Christ, St. John the Baptist, St. James, and all your saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, for thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us against us, and lead us not into temptation.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Easter and always. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave my way to the font at the back if you'd like to just turn to face font. You'll always find a font by the door of the church, and it's because it's there to remind you of your identity in Christ and the fact that you will be raised with Christ one day and that's why it's always at the door. It's a first reminder when you walk into any church that you will be raised with Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. So if you'd like one by one to follow me out, don't forget to take a chocolate egg and uh, Sue's pleading for people to take an egg. <laughs> if you'd like to follow me out for some singing, bring your orders of service with you because it's got the words in. over there actually. <laughs> Can we get a sheet? Yeah, yeah. that'd be brilliant, thank you. cold in the shade so you might want to stand in the sun <laughs> but at least we've got some nice weather for this everybody out did you all get your chocolate eggs yes <laughs> okay it's, it's not easter day unless we sundown be the glory so we'll start with that one and they get harder as they go along, so I don't know why I did it that way around, but never mind. <laughs> Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun, and less is the victory thou or death hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the 
stowed away. Kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou o death hast won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, death hath lost its sting. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou o death hast won. No more we doubt thee, Glorious Prince of Life, life is not without Thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through Thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to Thy home above. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou o death hast won. Might have to work out how the next one goes, actually. <laughs> Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss, Alleluia. Hymns of praise, then let us sing. Alleluia, unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia, who endured the cross and grief, Alleluia, sinners to redeem and save, But the pains which he endured, Alleluia, our salvation have procured, Alleluia. Now above the sky he's king, Alleluia, where the angels ever sing, You know, I was talking about the resurrection being a laughter, freed forever and ever. Well, this next Easter carol used to make me giggle a lot as a child because of the last verse, which talks about a trump. <laughs> a trump from east to west. Paul's just dying over there. While I was <laughs> so as a young chorister, this used to make us giggle a lot. Um, so, so it's quite funny. Um, but very traditional Easter carol. It's a little bit tricky to sing, so um, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> this joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, hath sprung to life this morrow. At Christ that once was slain, there burst his three-day prison. 
our faith had been in vain. But now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Death's flood hath lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from ill, my passing soul deliver. Had Christ at once was slain, at best his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now hath Christ arisen, 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 arisen. My flesh in hope shall rest, and for a season slumber, till trump from east to west. Shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ at once was slain, Ne'er burst his three-day prison, Our faith had been in vain. But now hath Christ arisen, 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 <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. Have a lovely day. It's been lovely to celebrate with you all.